Greetings, beloved. I pray that all is well with everyone. Hope everyone is having a great day. Um, this is, um, well, this is Sister Saida, because there's no telling which channel. It'll probably be on both channels, but which YouTube channel it'll be on. But anyway, I, I greet you and pray that all is well with you uh, out there in YouTube land or Facebook, wherever you may hear this message. Um, I'm just back again as all here as, as always to encourage us all to live a life that is victorious in Christ Jesus and in Christ alone. Um, uh, there's so much uh, confusion in the world and so much confusion in those who uh, name the name of Jesus Christ as well because so many are in religious systems and uh, organizations and institutions and and then they're starting to hear those uh, from the wilderness uh, the uh, those voices and from the wilderness speaking another something else and it's like oh which what is going on you know and and then because some people are just so religious their hearts are hardened to the word from the those voices that are crying in the wilderness crying out from the wilderness and then there's the other ones whose hearts are softer where they know that it's like there's got to be more than this <laughs> got to be more than this you know I'm reading on my own I'm studying on my own but it is not correlating or lining up with what's going on in this system and this religious institution every you know things are not the same what do I believe what's going on yeah that's praise God praise God just keep on studying and keep on asking the spirit what's going on and walk in the spirit so that you would not fulfill the lust of the flesh don't worry about people and oh they got they need me or oh, no don't him and haw about the people it's Jesus is not the people you need to obey Jesus not the people that's where we go wrong and having these uh, uh I want to call them soft spots for less of a better word for people right now. And these God has not called you into a building. He called you out of a building. Uh, so the reason why I came on because uh, so that I can stay on track somewhat um, is because uh, some people, uh, again, I guess I'll get back to something like that. But even speaking of people who are, uh, I want to call people, I, I know I use that word a lot. And what does it really mean and whatever. I use the word religious a lot. And I'm going to try to stay away from that or I'm going to probably use try to use other words. But, but Jesus talked about people like that. He said that they were religious, that they were stiff-necked, and that they were, uh, I'm going to use the word archaic. They are archaic and their Old Testament in, in their lifestyles, and they are uh, slave masters because they put you in bondage to the law. They put themselves in bondage to the law, those that follow it, because some of them, they don't, they don't follow the, those laws, but they put others under the law. They don't follow it themselves. They put others in bondages to the law. That's what they do. Um, but uh, so, yes, yeah, so I think I'm going to try to use Old Testament and archaic because it was the Old Testament in which you found a lot of these religious acts, these religious traditions, these religious beliefs, these religious activities, observance of days and Sabbaths and can't eat this, don't wear that. All of that is bondage. It's so I mean, it would tie my stomach in knots to have to, oh, oh, uh, 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 and I've been there, so I know, because uh, I have been there. It is very stressful. It's anxiety upon anxiety upon anxiety, trying to, uh, don't step on this crack, <laughs> don't step over that hole, watch out for that black cat, don't go under that ladder, I mean, it's all the same, it's really all the same, when Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and more, that life more abundantly, and, and he that is free is free indeed, when you're in him, you're free, New Testament, modern day believers, you have become free, but you gotta connect to Jesus Christ, stop connecting with those religious institutions, systems, and, 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 and organizations, and, and leaders, because they are bondage, all caps, they're just bondages, come out 
from among them. John 4, uh, in John 4, we, we read the, the account of uh, the Samaritan woman, the woman at the well, uh, when she met Jesus. And Jesus was, you know, they were having this dialogue, this wonderful dialogue. And I thank God for Jesus. Look how he just took the time with this woman to speak with her lovingly and carefully and to draw her in, you know, to him and, and to a greater, better life because she was in such a, a bonded, a bonded, a bondage type life herself. And look at how he relieved her from all of that instantly. And then she instantly became an evangelist to go and tell others about him and others came to him. You know, I love this uh, 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 this account here. It's, it's just wonderful. But you never see that in all of those that call themselves all these grandiose names, uh, bishops, apostle, chief, this chief, that, the grand, oh, God, grand poobah. Just, it's just nonsense. It's just utter nonsense. And it's pride. The root of it is pride. It's ignorance, but it's Pride, pride will, you know, is the, the root of it, and then the one of the the branches is ignorance, cause and foolishness and nonsense, because pride. That's why God hates it, because it makes fools out of people. It puffs you up, and and it, and it's nothing in there. It's nothing. It's it's just clouds without rain. Okay, useless is all it is. Robes and big chains and all these uh, big words and talking over people. Hey, come on now. When Jesus talked to people, he talked to them in parables, in manners and ways that they could understand by the grace of God, right? But no, these other people, I mean, look at it, please, beloved. By G, uh, Paul said it, examine yourself to see if you're still in the faith, see if you are in the faith, see if you ever was in the faith, and see if others are in the faith. I know they taught you, don't be fruit pickers, don't be fruit examiners, don't don't be look at pick, looking at people's fruit. I know they taught us that, they used to teach us that, don't, don't, don't be fruit examiners or pickers. Yes, you do. Yes, you better examine yourself and examine those that are around you too. Don't just be in the midst of people because they said so. Oh, no. No. So, the reason I came on <laughs> is because people are religious. They think they are so spiritual and they, they look down on others because they think others are not because their activities are showy activities because you attend worship services or because you are in Bible studies or because you are uh, wait, I'm going to even go to, go out here you, your face is bare of makeup and you have on the longest skirt dragging the, the ground or uh, you're a deacon or a deaconess or you have posts in those religious systems or you you know you you get up every morning uh, uh, praying and speaking in tongues and all of that all of that is nothing if you really don't know Christ okay because really you you don't because all of that is just really utter nonsense it it's not even unto the Lord it's up to you and your own it was that one uh I can't think of where it is right now when the one was saying, oh, Lord, I'm so glad I'm not this and I'm so glad I'm not that, you know, and, you know, you talking to yourself, you know, but the other one came and said, Lord, you know, like, have mercy on me, forgive me, you know, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a sinner, blah, 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 you know, uh, you know, you can't, don't look at people and, 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 and look down, not even look, don't look down on people thinking that just because they don't attend worship services or you don't see them praying and speaking in tongues and uh, whatever, that they're not uh, close to God. I heard somebody say something that was so uh, off-putting. It was so off-putting. It was so off-putting. Yes. You do not know whose relationship is alive with God or not. The Bible says that God is a spirit 
and they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth. When this, when, let me even read some of this Bible here, uh, as a matter of fact, because when Jesus was talking to this woman in the 21st verse of this chapter four, it says, Jesus replied, believe me. Okay. Well, let me go back up to 19. Uh, she, he, I'm just going to be part of it or somewhat of it. Yes, oh, 20, 20, excuse me. So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Gerizim, uh, where our ancestors worshiped? And I'm sure that's, that's, that's a variant word. So 21 said, Jesus replied, believe me. Dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter where you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. 23, but the time is coming, indeed, it's here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. 24, for God is spirit. So those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and and in truth, spirit and in truth. He said, that, you know, people in, in the Old Testament, they worshiped him uh, 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 in, in, in mountains and Jerusalem, all of these different, different places. But he said, but, it, but I mean, or, or those two places is only in these designated places, but God is a spirit. He's anywhere and he's everywhere. He, you know what I'm saying? So he, you could worship him anywhere, but it is in spirit and in truth. He's looking for true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth. It doesn't matter the place. So people like people go through life you know, you go through all day. You don't have to go somewhere to worship God. You don't have to go to some temple, go to some mosque, go somewhere. Anywhere you go, anywhere you are, in your car, in your bed, in your bathroom, in your shower, in your laundry room, in your backyard, on a us, wherever you are, you can worship God. You can speak to God. You can have a dialogue with God. It's you know, so people have gotten these these awful, uh, uh, archaic, uh, uh, traditional. Old Testament, old timey, nonsense, religious field uh, thoughts about other people because they don't come to church or because you don't see them worshiping God or speaking to God. You think that they're not and you think you're better than them and you're more spiritual and all that. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You better come down off of that high horse. You better know that you know that the, you know the real, true, and living Jesus Christ. Because you may not even know the real and true living God, which you don't. Because you have a wrong idea. Your perspective, your insight, is your ideology is wrong about him. Totally wrong about him and then totally wrong, wrong about others as well. And, you know, it's totally wrong about others. You need to get yourself right with God. Actually, you know, that's what you need to do. And then let's continue on a little bit. So 31 says, meanwhile, the disciples were ur urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. And, and Jesus said, uh, but Jesus replied, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food? food while we were gone the disciples asked each other then jesus explained my nourishment comes from doing the will of god who sent me and from finishing his work you know the saying four months between planting and harvest but i say 
wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe. The fields are already ripe, he said, for harvest. The harvesters pay the harvester uh, harvesters pay good wages, and the fruit they harvest uh, is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike? You know the saying: one plants and another harvests. And it's true. I sent you to harvest where you didn't plant. Others have already done the work. And now you will get to gather the harvest. Praise the Lord. So God is telling us that the harvest is ripe and it's ready. Go out there and harvest souls for the Lord God Almighty. Get out of this religious institution and this religious system. And if you don't see that happening in your fellowship or whatever, get out of there. Go and get alone. And people are saying, oh, I need people to fellowship with. Where are other people? Where are other believers? God did not call you to other people, right? You know, you know I'm not saying fellowship is bad. Fellowship was good for us to come together, strength, help strengthen and encourage one another and break bread with one another. And all of that is good. But get out there and get the work done. What do you that's the problem. You want to have fellowship and, 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 and really you just want to be with other around other people because you're used to that in these systems. You're used to being at this uh, this program, that program, and but you're still alone if, and it's just a foolish waste of your time, your money, your resources, and your talent. Being in these institutions is a waste of time. I wish people would understand that. What are you doing for Jesus Christ? And being in that institution, does you not doing anything for Christ. You are not doing anything for Christ Jesus. Nothing at all. He's not edified by it. He's not glorified by it. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. So, beloved, know your know the spirit of God. Get close to God. Get close to God. Get close to God. Get out of those places. The places are just death, death, death boxes, death. It's just a death. It's just they're cemeteries. That's what they are. They are cemeteries full of dead works and full of dead people, dead men walking, dead bones, whitewashed tombs. That's all they are. They just full of just it's just it's just ugh, it's just nonsense, beloved. It's just nonsense. So I just want to encourage you. Don't don't think you're something that you're not. Go and find out who you are. Know your identity in Christ Jesus. You know, if you claim to be a Christian and you're naming the name of Jesus Christ, beloved, find out who the Christ is. Who are you following? Are you following Jesus Christ or are you following your religious leader? Okay, the God of the Bible or the God of himself? You know, the God of his belly. Because that's who these are. There's ones that's calling you to bring your tithes so that they can have on a new suit, new shoes, and go here and go there and do all kind of nonsense and, and just be nonsense. You, 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 you are perpetuating a lie. That's what you're doing. So I pray that you will be edified. I pray that this exhortation has blessed you in the name of Jesus. I pray that your eyes will be open. The scales will come off of your eyes. And I pray that you will be loose from the bondages that you are in. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the remainder, the latter part of your life will be greater than the former. And that you will find joy and peace peace and righteousness right way of doing things and and again joy in the holy ghost as you walk in him fulfilling him this woman found so much fulfillment jesus said you'll find fulfillment and joy when you are harvesting okay when you are helping people and what does that look like it looks different for different people because some are called for pastors some are evangelists but however you have been called to go out there go and do it you know some are random acts of kindness some are it's just different ways the lord will call you to 
be out there harvesting, touching lives, making impacts, making inroads, helping the people to be blessed and helping people to find Christ Jesus. Another thing that just came to mind, if you look again in this uh, this uh, John 4, those people were so blessed by what, you know, what Jesus was saying and some of them more wanted to hear it. What did Jesus do? He stayed over there a couple of more days. How many times you don't see your pastor go, oh, I'm going to say your pastor don't go anywhere. They go around call yourself preaching to people or whatever, just nonsense. But they don't go to do these remote places where people have not go, heard the gospel. They go on where people have heard the gospel. That's where it all is not. That's what's so nonsense about it. You go to church every week and people are preaching to the same crowd of people every week. Go and speak to people in remote places of people who have not heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What sense does it make to keep preaching to it? The people that you keep preaching to the same messages, the people who already say, Jesus said it's not the people who need a, it's, it's the sick people that need a physician. Come on now, if you will, you don't need a physician, right? Oh, get a clue, get a revelation. Have a good day. It's, again, I'm always here to encourage us all to live a life that is a victorious in Christ Jesus. Don't forget to like this video, comment, uh, share this video, subscribe to this channel, uh, subscribe to our lifestyle, uh, uh, Christian lifestyle channel, uh, like our Facebook page, all of that. Uh, we just love you and we we bless the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for your life, and we thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.